Hey, greetings all! Last Outrider here. I know you're all excited about the next chapter of Who Are the Salamanders? So let's get right into it with the Forge Father. It is a great honor for any salamander to be chosen as Forge Father, for the title is only given to the most heroic exemplar of the chapter. To be so named, the space marine in question must be a great warrior, skilled in battle, but this alone is not enough. The Forge Father must excel in the qualities that the salamanders themselves esteem most highly. Self-reliance, fierce loyalty, sacrifice, and uncompromising determination and tenacity. No matter what the odds, a salamander does not relent. These are the hallmarks of the chapter, and have been since the days when their Primarch first walked amongst them. The Forge Father is often chosen from a leadership position, typically, but not always, one of the captains of the companies. Upon becoming Forge Father, the individual renounces his old position, title, and name, and takes on a new role in the name of Vulcan. The Primarch of the Salamanders was named Vulcan, for that was the name given to the greatest of the Salamanders, the giant lizards that roam the volcanic mountains of Nocturne. There you go, so that explains um, how Vulcan got his name, if you didn't, if, if, if you didn't need, notice that right there. <clears throat> the Primarch of the Salamanders was named Vulcan, for that was the name given to the greatest of the Salamanders, the giant lizards that roam the volcanic mountains of Nocturne. So there you go. He's named after the greatest of the salamanders that live there. It is the Forge Father's task to seek out and find the artifacts left by the Primarch, five of which have already been found. It is his role to sacrifice the solace of brotherhood for a life lived mostly in solitude and duties yet more perilous. <laughs> so what comes next, you ask? Oh, let me see. We're going to talk about his stand himself. Let's see about him. Here we go. <clears throat> As the close of the 41st millennium approaches, the current forge father of the Salamanders is Vulcan Hastan. Since his early days as a scout, Hastan has been a much noted warrior. He alone, amongst his recruiting class, captured a unique beast. For his mantle, he slew a molted trihorn, amongst the most vicious and cunning of their reptilian breed. Even teams of veteran drake hunters might struggle to accomplish such a deed. His dance skills as a smith, the working of hammer upon anvil, were such that the master artificers stopped over his work and admired them. The sentiment was expressed in a number of ways, but it all amounted to the same. Truly did the blood of Vulcan himself run in the novice. The Salamander's fortress monastery is not upon Nocturne itself, but instead resides upon its giant moon, Prometheus. In the halls of that edifice can still be found trophies of war brought back by Hastan from his time serving in the battle companies. When he was promoted to the first company, the Fire Drakes, Hastan's ability with bulk, Bolter and Flamer saved his squad more than once. His bold actions and great hardiness winning him many accolades. But it was his leadership, stamina, and sheer determination that truly sealed his actions and, oops, that truly sealed Hastan's meteoric rise to captain. 
during the orc raids and the resultant seismic activity of the awful time known as the Fire Year. It was Sestan's inspired and tireless defense that saved so many of Nocturne's citizens. Histan had served the salamanders with great distinction for nearly a century when the Pantheon Council commanded that he set down his burdens as a commander of the Fourth Company and don the mantle of Forgefather. In solemn and prescribed ceremony, Hastan relinquished his old titles and duties and emerged out of the same flame as this and in the same manner as their Primarch. He would follow Vulcan's trail, searching for details of the Primarch's lone ventures about the galaxy and searching for clues about the hidden relics. Sounds like a TV show, doesn't it? The Ventures of Vulcan! I wonder if that's like Star Trek reference or something. There has to be some, some little inside joke there that Vulcan's history is that he journeys around the galaxy on adventures, hiding stuff. But never mind. I'll let other people ponder if there's a, a coincidence. As Forge Father, Hastan would maintain his seat upon the Pantheon Council. However, his post would ensure that he was an irregular attendant at best, for his travels were to be long and perilous. In pursuance of his quest, Hastan has walked a crooked and winding path across the galaxy. He has been guided from system to system by clues inked within the Tome of Fire. These are the texts that their Primarch left behind before his last and final disappearance. Remember that. Last and final disappearance. There is no repetition there. It might have been his last disappearance, but not his final one. Or perhaps it was his final disappearance, but not his last one. This makes sure you understand that it was both his final and last disappearance. In them are the words of wisdom and guidance for his sons. But there is more besides. Within those many volumes, secrets are revealed. Prophecies, clues, and references were left for the wise to decipher. For the salamanders know as their Primarch taught, that the forged blade must be tested and retested, as the strongest metals are folded in upon themselves over and over again, until, at last, they find their utmost strength. So did Vulcan leave behind the answers, buried in hidden sigils disguised as not yet deciphered code. Yes, that's what I said. Buried in hidden sigils disguised as not yet deciphered code. What exactly does that mean? I don't know. More than anyone in the chapter, the Forge Father knows the Tome of Fire expertly. He, more than any other, calls upon its guidance to lead him on its trail. It is as if, across millennia and the depths of space, the will of Primarch Vulcan still moves the warriors that bear his genetic legacy. His stand's knowledge of the Tome of Fire and his ability to nav nav navigate its labyrinthine chapters are unrivaled. He has spent years studying its pages, committing their words to memory. On his long and lonely voyages, this is how Hastan spends his time, in constant reflection, poring over each word, studying each symbol for a secret meaning. Once, perhaps, 
Stan had been bold and outgoing, but now he is more thoughtful and reflective than ever. Although alone, detached from the salamander's chain of command, the Forge Father can call upon his battle brothers as needed and direct their actions to aid in securing any clues. To the rest of the chapter, even to those who knew him previously, the Forge Father has become a figure of legend and utmost respect. In the Forge Father, they see reflected aspects of their Primarch himself. For the Forge Father follows in his footsteps and carries about him artifacts forged by Vulcan's own hands. Indeed, amongst Hastan's gear is equipment born to battle by Vulcan during the Primarch's days fighting alongside the Emperor at the birth of the Imperium. <laughs> Next time! We're going to talk about what are the nine artifacts of Vulcan. I'll see you then. Bye.